raising the IQ and bankrolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn. Bet. Win. Better IQ. Good afternoon and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lang. It's college basketball uh, on the brain here for uh, today as uh, we break down not only uh, some regular season games, but conference tournament action officially underway. We will touch on a few conference tournaments, the Missouri Valley, uh, the Ohio Valley, and uh, I believe the Atlantic Sun. Also some uh, regular season games as power conferences wrap up uh, their uh, regular seasons here this uh, week. And uh, speaking of uh, March, March Madness, uh, we got you covered here at uh, Better IQ. Two options to get on board uh, with the uh, handicapper of your uh, choice. Uh, real simple, remainder of the uh, season. Every college basketball play, you choose the handicapper, uh, just one ninety nine. And if you want to add a second handicapper, it's only 99 bucks more. So essentially, you're getting buy one, get one free. Remainder of the season, every conference tournament play, regular season, NIT, NCAA, side total, best bet. You get it all, uh, again, for those discounted rates. All the details on the front page at betteriq.com. Uh, if you do have any questions, we can walk you through it. Uh, call us up at one 923 8867 or email support at betteriq.com. Uh, okay, let's break down some uh, hoops with our guest here for this afternoon, Micah Joe. Micah, how are you? I'm doing really good, Andrew. Uh, I love college uh, or conference tournament week and actually two weeks. Um, Waz and I have talked about it. I really enjoyed this a little bit more than the actual tournaments. There's more volume, which I like. And, you know, you do get to watch a lot of games. And sometimes with all the games going together, uh, you know, day by day after day, um, playing back to backs, things get lost and, and you have to do your research. But, you know, there's a lot of value out there. Yeah, no, uh, no doubt. Uh, let's get to a couple of. Uh, I know you got circled a couple of power conference games. We'll start first with the Temple as they head to uh, UConn. And uh, UConn, uh, I know you wrote an article what uh, last week or a few weeks ago, Micah, talking about UConn and that uh, home road uh, dichotomy. And another dichotomy is that uh, UConn really slowed down the pace, trying to grind out uh, wins. They're shorthanded. Adams obviously out for the remainder of the uh, season, and uh, they've trended under the uh, total. And we saw this one; they were toying with it last night, Mike, almost a setup, played it up to 145. I woke up this morning, and uh, lo and behold, it's down to 141 and a half after opening 143 and a half. Uh, UConn is a two-point favorite here against the Owls. What are your thoughts and opinions? Well, um, I like first half under in this. Connecticut hasn't cracked over 67 since uh, January 26th, and I don't expect that to happen. I think Temple's going to play conservative. They really need this win. Um, they're squarely on the bubble. I mean, they're sitting right in the middle of it. They need a couple good wins. I don't know. if this Is this a quadrant one win? I'm not sure if it is. Um, it's got to be at least a quadrant two win, but they definitely want to win this game. Uh, and I expect a lot of conservative play. Uh, Connecticut has slowed down and without Adams, you know, that, that is basically their most dynamic, uh, offensive player. And, and I really like first half under here. Let's go down to uh, Cincinnati at uh, Central Florida and uh, UCF. Uh, I think they're in. I, you know, barring an absolute co- uh, collapse, Cincinnati obviously uh, in. And uh, I've talked about it here with the uh, the Bearcats. Uh, Mike, I wrote an article a few weeks back. Encourage you to go back and write or read it. And the gist of the article was, you know, in college basketball, wins. And point spread covers are very, very correlative. If you go in and you look at all the the top teams in every conference, not all of them, but a majority of them have winning spread records. And if you go down to the bottom of the standings, uh, you see teams with losing uh, spread records, both straight up in uh, ATS. Uh, but Cincinnati, kind of one of those outliers uh, where they're winning ball games, but have not been very successful against the spread. And I think uh, some of that has to do with Micah that uh, Cincinnati is still. Cincinnati, but they've taken a little bit of a step back. In fact, uh, they're maybe a little bit better offensively than they were last year, which is hard to believe, but defensively still strong, just not elite. And that little downtick in defensive performance, I think, has played a key part because if you go in and look at, uh, particularly of late, a lot of their games they're failing to cover, um, you know, two points, three points, four points, and it's coming down to, you know, those, uh, you know, the difference in last year's team that could get those stops and this year's team, again, still pretty good defensively, just not elite. Uh, what do you make here of this matchup? A good one, two and a half here for the uh, Knights, total of 125. 
Well, uh, compared to last year, Central Florida is somewhat uh, taking a step back defensively throughout the season, but I think recently they've ramped that up a little bit. The the games I've seen uh, Central Florida play recently, Taco Falls pretty much is asserting himself offensively a little bit more. Um, you know, he's still not really smooth, and some of it's still herky jerky. I think he'll benefit. Uh, he'll have a huge benefit getting uh, tutelage in the NBA and getting some of his footwork down. This Central Florida team is really on a big roll. Um, I don't I don't really like a re- revenge factor. They lost that Cincinnati, and I don't think that really plays into it. Central Florida still, I agree, I think they're in as well. I'm not sure they believe that, and I, I think that they're going to uh, be really motivated today. And I'm with you, Cincinnati defensively hasn't been uh, been up to par. I really like this uh, Central Florida team, and you and I have talked about teams that are built to go and go uh, a long way in the tournament or at least win some games. And this Central Florida team really surely fits into that mold. Um, they're somewhat they somewhat struggle offensively at times, but B.J. Taylor can score. Aubrey Dawkins can score. I really like Colin Smith, the uh, transfer from George Washington. He's made a big difference. Chad Brown is an experienced player, and obviously, you know, if Taco Fall can do what he wants. If he, if he really wants to score, he can, and and he can put points on the board as long as they don't foul him. I think he's the worst as far as. If you include uh, everyone that's played a certain amount of minutes, I think he's the worst free throw shooter in the nation. So sometimes he has to leave the uh, game late in the games. But I really like these guards. B.J. Taylor with the ball in his hands, I think, is is the best player on the floor um, other than maybe even Cumberland for Cincinnati. He's a great scorer. But I like Central Florida, and, and I laid the two and a half this morning. Yeah, both teams kind of mirror one another. That was, you know, Dawkins figured out. I mean, yeah, that's that's kind of who he's built Central Florida into. They wanted to kind of mirror Cincinnati and, and both these teams, how they go about it. Uh, patient in the half court, playing stingy defense. Uh, they have enough scoring to win on uh, mo- most uh, nights. And uh, like I said, both teams going to find themselves in the uh, postseason. Uh, Speaking of the postseason, if I read one more article saying Indiana is live to get in the postseason after wins against Wisconsin, Michigan State, I'm going to throw up. But uh, the Hoosiers <laughs> are playing a little bit better here basketball. Uh, but I'm not necessarily uh, – I'm leery, Mike. I guess that is my, my, uh, my point in uh, Illinois – um, you know, to me, this is a huge game for Illinois. It's somewhat of a rivalry. Um, and, and, and Illinois would love nothing better than to kind of punch Indiana in the, in the mouth. And I think they're capable of uh, doing it here. So uh, no real movement, however. Uh, Alina open two, two across the board offshore. Totals uh, clicked upwards to 141. What are your thoughts on the game? Well, I, I think some of the, uh, the the Illinois, they still haven't been really good in the stats, and they've been winning some games. And honestly, Brad Underwood is really good at taking teams that somehow find a way to win games that they really don't dominate the stats in. Uh, my lean here is under, and I think this, this line's going to keep going up. I haven't bet anything yet, but I think it's going to keep going up, up, up. And uh, Indiana has been playing slower, and they've had some success playing slower. And uh, I envision this game uh, going under the total, and... I'm going to play that. I don't really like it in the first half unless it gets a little higher. I'm looking for 67. I'm looking for 67 and 142, and I'm going to play under in this game. Yeah, you go back to Indiana's last uh, last game. You know, I mean, that Iowa game had 71 possessions, Micah, but that was in overtime. And then last time out, you know, Michigan State, I know, is slowed down. I, I know Michigan State's shorthanded, but Michigan State still wants to run, still wants to score in Indiana. Uh, they bogged the game down, and that was only 60 possessions. You get a 60 possession game tonight, it ain't going over 141. So, um, you know, credit, not even credit. That's, you know, a, a million coaches are doing that where, you know, they see that, hey, we don't have the scoring. We got to shorten the uh, game, and uh, Indiana's going to try to do that here for uh, tonight. SMU, they head to uh, Houston. Uh, some money here on uh, SMU. Houston opened 14, down to a 12 and a half, might go 134 and a half the total. I like first half over here, and my splits, uh, SMU has, has opened games uh, higher, basically, in the first half than, than they play in the second half, and Houston as well. Um, off a loss, I expect Houston to come out and really, really force the tempo and play a little faster. Uh, UCF managed to slow the game down on them, and, and I think that you know the results, they don't like those results. They scored 64. Uh, the three games before, they scored 99, 71, and 85. Um, I really like first half over here. I think, uh, you know, I, Houston likely can cover the first half minus seven. That's not what, what I'm really betting on. SMU has no problem lately playing a little bit faster than what their opponents play. Um, I, I'm, I'm taking over 62 and a half in the first half here. 
Let's go down to uh, some tournament action, uh, Mike, in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Uh, Missouri Valley, just a, a brutal league this uh, year. Very balanced, though. Um, this is at the Scott Trade Center. It's typically at the Scott Trade Center. And, um, you know, you go back historically and look, the Missouri Valley, uh, you know, uh, is not a very talented uh, league overall from an offensive standpoint. And then you put them in a big arena with tight rims. And these games are notoriously uh, ugly from an offensive uh, perspective. And uh, that's why we've seen uh, money on the under in both matchups here for uh, tonight. In fact, I'm surprised we didn't see it earlier uh, today. Uh, first game here, Micah Valpo, uh, they take on uh, Indiana State. This one opened 131, now down to 126, 126 and a half with uh, uh, the Sycamores uh, laying uh, three and a half after an opener of two. That's a pretty significant uh, move and one that I'm, uh, again, I use the term leery. Um, you know, Indiana State, one of the weaker defensive teams, and, you know, laying three and a half is a lot different than laying two, especially when you got a total 126. What are your thoughts here, Micah? Well, I'm with you, and I think these, these plays seem – I don't know if they seem obvious, but uh, the unders. But I like I like under in this game. I like under in the next game. I, I just think that these first half unders in the Missouri Valley Conference traditionally have been really really good. Uh, they tend to bog down from the from the beginning. But I would caution against playing game unders in these uh, these small conference tournaments here. These uh, these teams tend to foul a lot at the end if it's close, and these both these games look like they're going to be close. Uh, you have to be really careful with those because some teams, you know, you don't see it in the regular season. A team would be down 10 with a minute and a half to go, and they just pretty much give up for the most part. But seeing the end, uh, and the end is near in, in these uh, conference tournaments, I think you have to be careful of teams uh, fouling a lot at the end, and, and I like first half under in both of these instead of game under. Yeah, I agree, and I'll make the point where, look, I'm not, I'm not playing betting games projecting the fouls, whether or not they'll be there uh, late or not. But I will say, particularly on these low totals, what I'll do is if I like a game under, I'll generally split my bet. In fact, I might even play a little bit more, kind of like you, Mike. I might play a little bit more on the uh, the first half than the game. I'll still play the game, and look, I'm going to lose games here over the next couple weeks because of you know playing unders and falling late. That's just the nature of the uh, beast. You know, you got to you got to deal with it. You can't shy away because, uh, in my opinion, for every game that has a foul fest, there's a game that doesn't. Uh, so I think it ends up evening out in the end. But yeah, with these uh, low totals, uh, don't forget to grab a little. Uh, first half uh, under uh, this game Mike I'm with you I played a little bit of under as well this morning grab some 136 and a half as Evansville takes on Illinois State another big move on the side with Illinois State three and a half up to uh, five and a half uh, this total played down now uh, currently 134 134 and a half what are your thoughts Micah well I, I like first half under in this as well um, I, I think the uh, side move is probably because Muller's had such a good uh, success in the Missouri Valley Conference and this is your last chance possibly to bet against Walter McCarty, um, except for probably next year. I'm sure he'll be back because Evansville had a little bit of a surge. But some of the things that he's done strategically at, at the end of games are very, very questionable. Um, I'm not sure that he's the answer in Evansville. Um, I'm not laying the five and a half, but I'm definitely taking first half under in this game. Yeah, I think he'll be okay. Um, yeah, no doubt. You know, particularly I like Mueller. You know, I mean, McCarthy's up. He's up against it from a coaching perspective, but a lot of guys would be. You know, they're in their first year, and you know, the Missouri Valley. These, you know, these coaches have been there a long time. They're very good coaches. Um, you know, so he's yeah, no doubt he's made some mistakes. But I do think eventually that his brand name and his style of basketball, I think, because it's it's almost going to offset. Um, you know, his coaching shortcomings, because I do think, uh, you know, he's going to do well with recruiting. I think he's going to get a different brand of player than what you typically see in the Missouri Valley. And, uh, uh, you know, they like to get up and down the the floor. Uh, let's go down to the Ohio Valley Conference. It's a neutral site uh, deal in Evansville, Indiana. First game here, Micah Moorhead State takes on uh, Austin P. Austin P's had a fantastic season and they are taking money as we speak up to eight and a half total of 149. What do you got? Well, uh, you know, I have, I have some bias toward Moorhead. That's my alma, alma mater. Um, they played well last night, but I, I just don't see them hanging with uh, Austin P, especially playing back-to-backs when Austin P's had some rest. Um, I have a slight lean toward Austin P, but no, nothing really, really strong. Uh, last night, Moorhead slowed the game down a little bit. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure they will or can do that with uh, with Austin P, but... I like Austin P. Th- this conference is a really, really good conference as far as w- when we get into postseason play. Um, Austin P., Jacksonville State, and obviously Belmont and Murray State, that's going to be 
hopefully a nice semifinal. Um, I'm not necessarily sure that Murray and Belmont should be as big a favorites as, as they will be. Um, Austin P has a, has an experienced team that has some size. I lean a little bit toward Austin P. uh, probably lean a little bit under, but n- nothing really strong on this game. My game, my thoughts really are, are uh, on the next game. Micah, give me one word to describe your uh, experience at Moorhead State. Uh, it was an interesting place. It, it, interesting would be the uh, word that I w- would use to describe it. I grew up in Ohio and went to uh, college in, in Kentucky. And it was really, I grew up right on the border of Kentucky, but my first experience at Moorhead State was, you know, everybody, it was football season and, and I was, you know, I was a really big fan of football at the time and I played football and all everybody wanted to talk about was Kentucky basketball, not even more head state basketball. And that was really the most, uh, the most interesting thing that happened to me is the realization of how big, uh, Kentucky basketball was in the state when I got there. Oh, absolutely. I actually worked at, uh, Kentucky for a, uh, in the athletic department for a couple years and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's sickening, but yeah, and, and I would venture to say, Micah, a vast majority of kids that go to Murray, they go to Eastern Kentucky, they go to Moorhead State, um, are kids that either you know can't afford or didn't have the grades to get into uh, Kentucky because everyone wants to uh, be a part of Big Blue uh, Nation. Uh, next game here, uh, how about UT Martin? They've kind of turned things around, played a little bit better here down the uh, stretch. Uh, but I do like Jacksonville State. I love Ray Harper, particularly in the postseason. You know, everyone's kind of focused on Murray. Everyone's focused on Belmont. Two very good teams, but don't sleep on Jacksonville State, a very quality, uh, balanced basketball team. They find themselves laying 9.5, 10, Mike, a total of 148.5. Well, you've taken everything that I was going to say. I think he's one of the most underrated uh, tournament coaches that that is out there. Um, I'm looking at my notes, 15-4 and four over over his eight-year career in postseason tournaments he's won three he won interestingly enough he won the first two times the first two years he was at western kentucky he goes on and, and wins the conference tournament makes it to the ncaa tournament and then when he goes to jacksonville state same thing first year uh takes him in the ncaa tournament this guy i don't know what he does but he gets teams prepared to play in the tournament um, I laid nine and a half years with Jacksonville State. I think there's still value at 10 with Martin playing last night. You know, I've talked about Jacksonville State before. They're one of those teams that are that are built to play in these tournament type settings. They're obviously uh, limited offensively, but boy, you're going to have a tough time scoring against this team. Um, they are 12th in the nation in uh, block in block percentage defensively they have three players that are in the top 200 nationally and that's not even including their seven uh, seven foot center uh, norberto giga and uh this team's a really good defensive team it's the number one defense in the uh ovc and not that that's really hard belmont and murray are not really uh, predicated on on defense but i'm with you this is a this is a live team in uh, Jacksonville State, the Gamecocks are live to get to the uh, final of this conference tournament. It wouldn't surprise me if they get the bid. And if that happens, Andrew, we're looking at e- – either way, if that happens, these are four teams. If Austin P and Jacksonville State get to the semifinals, these are four teams in the Ohio Valley Conference that I really like in postseason play in some of those minor tournaments. These teams went on the road. Uh, they play pretty good defense, or in the case of Murray and Belmont, they're very, very efficient offensively, and Austin P is an experienced team. Jacksonville State's an experienced team. I think when it's all said and done, these four teams are going to be uh, against the spread winners in the postseason. Ray Harper, it's funny because I, I played small college uh, basketball, and he, he, he got his start. Um, he coached at Kentucky Wesleyan, which is a Division II school. And we talked about, look, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's a different ball game. I understand that. But, I mean, that dude was there, what, eight years. In seven of the eight years, he either won the national title or finished runner-up. And then he went to Oklahoma City, which is a powerhouse NAI school. Uh, they won the national championship twice and finished runner-up uh, once. So, um, you know, clearly this guy knows what he's doing when it comes to the uh, the postseason. He recruits well, and, um, you know, he's done a, a fabulous uh, job, a good coach, a coach that, you know, look, some guys are comfortable in their own uh, skin because I guarantee you uh, after every season that guy's fielding phone calls to take over at a bigger uh, program, but some guys are just, you know, they like the small conference uh, life, and uh, uh, he's done a, a very good uh, job. 
Uh, last tournament here, let's talk Atlantic Sun. This is uh, generally a, I shouldn't say a non-boarded, because nowadays everyone is technically boarded, but this is the extra board, so a lot of betters don't really uh, pay attention to some of these uh, leagues. I know you do, Micah. Uh, what do you know? Let's start with uh, North Florida as they take on uh, Liberty. Uh, Liberty, a 10.5 point favorite, total of 139.5. Well, North Florida's uh, leading scorer, Horschler, suspended. He's been out three games. They haven't played really well since. They they actually, in my opinion, lost the stats to uh, North Alabama yesterday and won the game. And I really look to bet against teams in situations like that. Liberty has been, lately, Liberty has been the best, uh, the best team in the Atlantic Sun. I know Lipscomb gets all the publicity in the press, but Liberty has been playing be- uh, better basketball. They are 13-2 uh, and two on the road. I see a blowout here, and uh, I, I'm I'm gonna I haven't bet this yet. I think it's still coming down. I think it might come down even further, but I'm gonna lay the ten with uh, Liberty against North Florida without their leading scorer. Speaking of uh, Lipscomb, and you're right. In fact, I just clicked on uh, Ken Palm, and and most of us as betters very familiar with that of Belmont. Belmont's historically, I mean, they've been a you know a, a mid major kind of powerhouse. Well, according to Ken Palm, Belmont is 51 and Lipscomb's 50. So that gives you kind of an idea of, you know, where uh, Lipscomb uh, ranks. So um, to be in a, such a weak conference and rank 50th in the country uh, with Ken Palm, that speaks volumes here about uh, Lipscomb. Uh, they find themselves laying 12 and a half here against New Jersey Tech. Total 145 and a half. What do you got here, Micah? Well, the reason Lipscomb's so high, they beat uh, SMU and TCU away this year. I mean, it's good scheduling. Uh, they gave Clemson a run for about a half, but then then kind of faded. And and the, they beat Louisville, took Louisville to the wire at Louisville, and only lost by four. Um, I released this uh, NJIT plus fifteen about two or three weeks ago. Um, they played with Lipscomb. I watched the game. Uh, you really, honestly, if you watched the game, you couldn't tell which team was a fifteen point favorite. It was, uh, you know, that Lipscomb came out and blitzed them right from the beginning, but then when NJIT settled down. They, they did a really good job defending uh, Lipscomb's balanced attack. NJIT has a 6'10 junior that got some NBA looks last year and uh, declared for the draft and then pulled his name back out. Um, he's a really good shot blocker, really good post scorer inside. Combine that with the freshman, San Antonio Brinson. Um, they've been a really good duo all year. They've got three good guards led by a uh, redshirt sophomore, Zach Cooks. Um, I really like... NJIT to make this game close. I'm going to take the 12 and a half. Um, I think we possibly could get 13. Lipscomb's so popular. Um, I, I I look for NJIT to play this down to the wire, and it wouldn't shock me if they they uh, they have the upset today. They really have been playing really good basketball lately, and I think that uh, they could win this whole thing. Yeah, I've seen uh, uh, seen Lips Lipscomb's obviously you know right down the road from where I live. In fact, their best player Matthews. Uh, played at the uh, local uh, high school across the uh, street, got a chance to watch him play. He's a senior there for uh, Lipscomb, uh, shoots 41% from uh, three, a very, very good basketball uh, player, and uh, should be a good game here uh, for uh, tonight. All right, great stuff here with uh, Micah Joe. Be sure to uh, check out uh, Micah's selections here for today. I know Waz has a couple of uh, plays. I unfortunately did not find much. A couple games uh, moved overnight, kind of out of range, but we'll look to uh, fire back uh, tomorrow. But uh, like I said, uh, those plays, they are available on the uh, buy picks page and uh, uh, the best route to go uh, like I said earlier, is just one ninety nine. You get Micah, you can get Waz, you can get me, you can get Advantage Group, and just lock it in the remainder of the uh, season. Just one ninety nine. You'll start today, and you'll go all the way through the uh, national championship. Every single uh, selection, you're going to save a ton of money if you go that route. If you're a guy that likes to buy daily plays, you spend a little bit more, and uh, you know you'll you'll get your money's worth, no uh, doubt. Uh, that too is available on the Buy Picks page. If you have any questions, one last time, call us up at one eight six six nine two three eight eight six seven or email support at betteriq.com. Okay, that'll wrap up the show. Enjoy the uh, games, tournament action here for uh, tonight. We'll be back again uh, tomorrow.